Well, good morning and welcome once again to the morning meditation with God at the same time by the generous and loving members and friends of the Midwest Church of Christ. The Midwest Church of Christ is located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky, and we'd like to extend to you and to your entire family a warm and loving invitation to come and be with us in any and all of the services of the Midwest Church of Christ. Again, located at 2115 uh, uh, Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. Our order of services include each Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. is our first worship of the day. Then at 9.30, uh, we have our Sunday Bible School. And at 10.30, we have our um, second worship of the day. Then uh, at 10.30, on Wednesdays, we have our midweek Bible study uh, and devotional services. Our first session is at 10 a.m. in the morning, and our evening session is at 6.50. That's 10 minutes before 7. If you would like to study the Bible, in the comforts of your own home. We have two ways that you can do this. One is the Bible correspondence course that you can take by mail. The second is the personal home study where someone will come and sit down with you, study the Word of God, right in the comforts of your own home. Either way, you give us a call. 774 3986. We'll register you today. And other announcements. <clears throat> we are having our, first of all, I want to say uh, several of you uh, came out to the uh, pro, uh, to the um, Day of Hope revival, uh, and uh, we had a great, great turnout. Um, some were uh, a little hesitant to come, and we we were praying for them. Uh, but the, the the crowd we had, well, it was well. Rep, every congregation was represented, and we are thankful uh, to God uh, for that. And I know that our God is is a, uh, a God who can, and we know that um, uh, He is able. And so may God continue to shower upon us, when Brother John uh, Malone Jr. Um, worked extremely hard along with his wife um, and uh, uh, those that uh, were working with him, uh, uh, Omari Wise and um, uh, um, and all of them. And so we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Our, on October the 11th, um, we'll be having uh, ordination uh, installation services um, for the um, uh, new elder and new deacons um, with the congregation. So we hope, trust, and pray that all members will be on, on hand for that, that day and uh, uh, tell your families and uh, they ought to be there to witness this, and we'll be making plans for it. The 100-year pictorial directory is available 
for you to take your pictures. And we, we need you to do that uh, <clears throat> as quickly as possible. The dates have been scheduled today, the 28th, from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, Wednesdays from 1 to 4 uh, p.m. Um, and Saturday, uh, October the 3rd and October the 10th will be from 2 to 4 um, p.m. Let's keep these in mind and let's do everything we can to get in and get our pictures taken. And also be on Sundays, uh, October the uh, 4th and October the 11th. Now this should give us the time that we need to come in and um, have your pictures taken and so we will have all of us in the um, in the uh, um, program and in the directory we want to also remind you that on Saturday the 10th We'll be having our congregational singing. The whole month of October is dedicated, is dedicated to the 100 year anniversary. Uh, October the 10th, we'll have congregational singing. We will be taping the congregation. Uh, we have song leaders coming in from out of town and uh, we'll be looking forward to this. Uh, then on the 17th, we'll be having our kickoff uh, 100th year tailgate. Amen. Um, um, we want you to come out with us on the 17th. Uh, health screening day will be on Saturday, October the 24th. Annual virtual song fest. Amen. We'll be on the 31st and Sunday the 1st of November will be the um, um, homecoming day and then on September on, on November the 2nd through the 5th there will be the J. Frank McGill Sound Doctrine uh, Kentucky Lectureship and it is going to be virtual. Praise be un, unto God. Our theme this year, standing on the faith of our past, building on our faith for the generations to come. The generations to come. Praise be unto God. Now let's remember our sick and shut in. Let's remember uh, Sister Jacqueline Holman. Um, Sister Clarice Floyd Johnson, Sister Emma Johnson, Sister Tanya Lee, uh, Sister uh, Don Marie Sizemore, just come out of the hospital, Sister Felicia Stevenson, uh, Sister Jaquay Thomas. Pray also for our Brother Wesley uh, Keys and uh, and uh, his wife, uh, uh, Sister Angela, praise be unto God. Now, let's um, remember our shut-in. Sister Lu Louise Covington, uh, Sister Sarah Cowan, uh, Sister... Uh, Mary Hunter, Sister Savannah Johnson, Sister Opal Pace, uh, Sister Pearl Smith, Sister Mary Wood, and please pray for Brother James Fraser and pray for Sister Bertha Fraser. Praise be unto, unto God. 
We want to remember those that are going through dialysis and radiation, um, uh, chemotherapy, uh, and other uh, treatments. We want to pray for our dear friends. Um, Sister Angela Walls Gill, Sister Sheila Heiner, Sister Sandy Hammond Schuler, uh, Sister Rita Kamishi. Pray for Sister Sarah, the daughter of Brother Clark and Sister Ellen Stannard. Pray for our beloved members, Brother Sister LaShonda McGill, Sister Beverly Bledsoe, and Sister Latanya Johnson. Pray also for uh, Brothers Jasper Crenshaw, Brother Richard Rose, Brother Gary King, Brother Frederick Hines, Brother Marvin Stevenson Jr., and Brother uh, David Ellis. Continue to pray for these and ask our God to strengthen them and help them along their journey. Let's go to our God in prayer. Our God and our Father, as we come before you today, we come with humility. We come asking for your grace and your mercy, recognizing that you and you alone are the hope of our lives. Father, we pray for our sick shut in. Those going through dialysis, radiation, chemotherapy, and other treatments. Lord, oh Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, oh God. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much for being the God that you are. And now I ask that you would hear the plead of your people. Search every person, every family, every jailhouse, hospital beds, nursing homes. Please, oh God, we call upon your mercy to visit each one and supply their every needs. We pray for our city, oh God. We pray, we pray for this group. Uh, that is bringing uh, uh, the evil to our community. We pray for them. We pray for these young people who are being guided down the wrong path of the civil rights movement. I pray, O oh God, that you would show your kindness, show your mercy, and let the Lord be Lord of us all the days of our life. We thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise be unto God. Now, I am. Uh, had one thing to do, and I needed to uh, give thanks to the radio uh, uh, donors this week, uh, Sister Terry Curry, Brother Tony, and Sister Chiquita Curry, Brother Larry Denny, uh, Sister Cynthia Purvis, Sister Angelica Robertson, uh, Brother Wayne Shemwell, uh, Brother Jerry uh, Lewis uh, Stevenson II, and uh, uh, Sister Joey Stevenson, uh, Sister Elaine Watts, and uh, our beloved friends, Brother David and Sister Rita Kamishi. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Now let's open up your Bibles.
to the book of Psalms, the first division. The Bible, the word of God says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and it is in his law that he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do with shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Jesus come to show us how to live in this new kingdom of God. Matthew records him teaching his disciples in the Mount. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse number 3, the Bible, the word of God says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. But they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful. They shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye, when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake, rejoice. Rejoice, he says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for a soul persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. Now let's open your Bibles to the book of First Samuel. The chapter is 25. And we're going to start reading back here at verse 1 um, with this chapter. The word of the Lord said, Samuel died, and all Israel, assembled to mourn him. And they buried him by his home in Ramah. David went down to the wilderness of Paran, a man of Maon, had a business in Carmel. He was very rich with 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats and was shearing his sheep in Carmel. The man's name was Jube, was Nabal, and his wife's name was Abigail. The woman was intelligent and beautiful. Amen. 
But the man, a Calabite, was harsh and evil in his dealings. While David, while David was in the wilderness, he heard that Nabal was shearing sheep. So David sent ten young men instructing them, go up to Carmel, and when you come to Nabal, greet him in my name. Then say this, long life, long life to you and peace to you, to your family and to all that is yours. I hear that you are shearing. When your shepherds were with us, we did not harm, harsh them, and nothing of theirs was missing the whole time they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and they will tell you, so let my young men find favor with you, for we have come on a feast day. Please uh, give whatever you can afford to your servants and to your son David. David's young men. David's young men rehearsed Amen. I uh, went and said all these things to Nabal on, his, on, Na on David's behalf. And they waited. Nabal asked them, Who is David? Who is Jesse's son? Many slaves the, these days are running away from their masters. Am I supposed to take my bread, my water, and my meat that I butchered for my, uh, for my shears and give them to these men? I don't know where they are from. David's men. David's men. retraced their steps. When they returned to him, they reported all these words. He said to, to his men, all of you put on your swords. So David and all his men put on their swords. About 400 men followed David while 200 stayed with the supplies. One of Nabal's young men informed Abigail, Nabal's wife. Look, David sent messengers from the wilderness to the Greek to the great uh, uh, to greet our master. But he yelled at them. The men treated us well when we were in the field. We, were, we weren't harassed and nothing of ours was missing. The whole time we were living among them. They were a wall around us both day and night. The entire, the entire time we were uh, herding the sheep. Now consider carefully what you must do because there is certain to be trouble for our master and his entire family. He is such a worthless fool. Nobody can talk to him. Oh, <laughs> oh my, my, my. 
My, my, my. Well, let's let's look let's look at let's look at verse one. Verse one says Samuel died, and all Israel assembled to mourn him, and they buried him by his home in Ramah. David then went down to the wilderness of Paran. A sharp contrast is, is shown in this, these verses between a harsh, selfish, man and a wise, courageous woman in this lesson. The picture painted of a man is that of a cold, mean person who was selfish and dishonest. Tragically, there are some persons who walk upon this earth, who are hard and mean men. Y'all seen some of them? Y'all seen some of them? Sure you have. Sure you have. On the other hand, the picture painted a woman is that of a sensible, intelligent understanding, wise, courageous, humble, and uh, she was beautiful. Amen. Uh, we need to recognize women are, are not little robots and little baby dolls. They have great uh, opportunity, great thus that they can bring uh, to a, a, a fa to a family, to the family of God, and to their families, and we've got to treat them with that. But as we open up here, uh, the prophet Samuel has died. The prophet Samuel has died. Uh, he was Israel's spiritual leaders who had served as both prophet and judge to the people. Remember, Samuel was the last person to serve as judge of Israel. His life and death closed the era of the judges and prepared the way for the monarchy, the rule of the king. More than anyone else, Samuel's faith and courage helped the Israelites begin the movement toward a united nation, toward undergoing a transition from 12 dis, uh, disunified tribes to a unified monarchy. Samuel was a nationwide leader in both politics and religion. And y'all and y'all say God don't want us to be uh in 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 uh, uh, in politics. Well, I want you to know uh, it won't be easy according to Brother Holloway uh, and I know he was right but I come to tell you uh, Samuel he he was the one that had had uh, a man went before went before uh, the king Saul and he was with David my brothers and sisters, 
No doubt many thousands were present at the funeral to pay their respect to this great servant of God. One of the major national leaders of Israel. Note that he was buried in his home in Ramah, not in the uh, elaborate tomb in some public by a man. Uh, he was a, a, a common man. He was a, a good, uh, decent man. He was the man. He was first the child who the mother brought to sent to Eli and uh, as a child God chose Samuel uh, to be uh, in the house of God his course have life have been uh, uh, chartered by his mother Hannah and my brothers and sisters Mothers, you you ought to be looking out for the best of your children. And the best for your children cannot be when you leave, amen, when you leave uh, church and Bible study out of the, the life of your children. You got to know, you got to bring your children to go to heaven. That is the most important thing in their life. They'll be able to go to heaven. My brothers and sisters, God is wanting us to be uh, in our children, being a part of the house of God teaching them to do the things that God had them to do. Receiving the word of Saul of Samuel's death, David retreated deeper into the desert, probably for the, the purpose of uh, mourning Samuel's death. boy, a deep sense of loss and grief must have uh, gripped David's heart, driving him uh, to face before he, he was bound to be wondering, would be able to advise and counsel him in these days when King Saul was so fiercely pursuing after the place to which David retreated was in the wilderness of Paran. This area was more than 100 miles south of the stronghold at uh, at Engadi, and Gedi rather where David and his men had out from Saul. However, however, it should, it should be noted, that, amen, that some uh, text translation that David retreated to Maon, which was on David's favorite hangouts. But let's, let's not squabble on that. Samuel's death is a reminder that we all will die. The world dies and no person can stop death. There's only two that I know of that escaped death. 
And that was Enoch. Genesis and Elijah was carried up in a whirlwind. My brothers and sisters, it is a wonderful thing that we see happening when God decides to take a person Yes, accidents and so of many other things takes us out. We are killing young people and and uh, killing one another. Louisville is on time on tap. Better the the all-time highs of murders in our city. The only thing that is going to change this situation, and that is the heart. We change the hearts of men and women. We've got to We've got to change this thing. We've got to change it. And we've got to help our young people know that they can be better than they are. Brothers and sisters, death is a And all of us are going to face that. You're going to face it unless Jesus comes and takes and 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 brings his judgment on the world up beginning at the church. The judgment the God will be at the house of God. And if it appear, if it appears among us, where will the sinner and the ungodly appear? If you, you haven't accepted Jesus, being born again by the precious blood of Jesus, you re, you heard the word of God, you believed it. You repent that you are a sinner, that you need Jesus. And then from that uh, confession, we will, amen, uh, baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that, amen, it'll be, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's a gift, you all. The Holy Ghost is a gift that God had provided for uh, this world for the salvation of the souls of men. Over the years, we have seen, we have seen business people, seen business people die, We've seen political leaders. Uh, we see the, uh, the 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 poor man dies, and the rich man dies, the educated man dies, the uneducated man dies. You see, death is the the equalizer. All men. All men are subject to die. And if you need, you need to uh, give yourself over to Jesus Christ and let him be all that you need. Then verse 2. 
verse 2 through 17. Now, the Bible says, a man at, Ma at Maon had a business in Carmel. He was a very rich man with 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats and were and was shearing his sheep in Carmel. The man's name was Nabal, and his wife's name was Abigail. The woman was intelligent and beautiful, but the man, a kind, was hard and evil in his dealings. Have y'all, amen. David <coughs> been good to Nabal. And Nabal was the, had a wife by the name of Abigail who was later David's wife and the need for other supplies. Just feeding such a large number of fugitives who a uh, <coughs> feeding 600 men bound to face hunger and need for other just feeding such a large uh, number uh, were constantly on the run and someone had to be uh, responsible for providing for them, provide food and supplies. David had to depend on wealthy landowners and others who uh, were uh, sympathetic to his cause. Keep, keep in mind that, that David had been protecting the citizens of Israel from Philistine raiders and maneuvers uh, who would uh, often sweep down on the land, killing, destroying, and stealing whatever they needed. Are yes, because David's protection, many citizens, property owners, willingly supported David and his men. My brothers and sisters, David approached Nabal. He confronted he confronted a man with a cold, hard heart who was rooted in selfishness and greed. But you know what? David says, I want you to, I want you um, to go to him. Brothers and sisters, kindness is always the order of business. No matter what comes down, you ought to always be kind and generous. You know, I think that's wrapped up in the second great commandment that we are to love neighbors as ourselves. My brothers and sisters, I believe we're not going to get into what David is wanting, but here it says it paints us a clear picture. You know David. You know what David has done for all those living on the borderline of uh, the Philistines. David, David protected them. So David, 
David was a man who was after God's own heart. But he, he ran into two other people. Nabal, a man with his cruel self. I can see him acting like Pharaoh. Well, who is David? And who is Jesse? Who is Jesse's son? That I should give him anything. Who, who, who is this? You go and tell him. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not giving my stuff to nobody. They, amen. Now, now, David. Nabal, the other character, the other character is Abigail. Now, it may, it goes through great lengths to share with us that she was a beautiful woman. Amen. She was, she was wise. She was kind. She was good. And, and she was smart and beautiful. Man, oh man, what, what, a, what a woman like that. My brothers and sisters, these three characters are going to mean something to us. We're going to get some great lessons from here. So tomorrow, we'll pick back up verse 2 through 17. God bless you. We'll open up the prayer line. Um, if you need prayer, you give us a call. 571-1240. I, I see that um, my, young, my young son in the gospel, uh, Franklin... Uh, Davies uh, has, has uh, uh, joined with us this morning. And we want to say uh, good morning to him and welcome to the morning meditation with God. So Franklin, God bless you. Praise be unto God. He, these kids are grown now. They're all grown. Praise God. Praise God. 571-1240. Midwest, we got several things we need you to be preparing for. I want to make this announcement. Uh, there will be <clears throat> there will be a <clears throat> giveaway. <clears throat> Excuse me. The <clears throat> the Kentucky Harvest is uh, giving um, um, food box giveaway, and uh, and it will, and 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 we need to, uh, if, if you need food, it's a box um, with many good things. You got chicken chili. You got chicken ta taco mix. Um, you got potatoes and apples. You have butter and cottage cheese. And um, uh, there's just so much in there. Celery. Uh, amen. And we hope, trust, and pray you, that you'll come out this Saturday. It's Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday. Y'all repeat after me. It is Wednesday of this week. You come to the Midwest Church of Christ. Come to our parking lot in the rear and uh, uh, at 2115 Garland. Um, at, at, um, all right. Praise God. Hello, caller. Welcome to the uh, uh, values to the Morning Meditation with God Radio Ministry. Can we help you? I am blessed and highly favored. How's Brother Kevin this morning? Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness. Oh my mama. Lord. Amen. Thank you Amen. so much. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, the prayers of, of the Lord. We just thank God for them. For all of those of you, you've got to be so careful. you got to be so careful. 571-1240. We have uh, time for maybe one more call. 571-1240. Um, I know in the hospital uh, yesterday we had um, in the hospital Sister Olivia Hanley's uh, cousin, um, uh, Mr. Campbell, um, where Brian, Kevin Campbell uh, is his name. And then there, praise God. Hello, call. It's Brother Stevenson. Can we help you? Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And, and we're praying for that girl, for Stacy. We're praying for Stacy. And God will help him. Uh, this is this this pan this pandemic has truly uh, messed with things, and we've got to we've got to work with our young people. Praise God. Well, God bless you. Thank you, sister. Praise the Lord. Dear, let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Be with us, Father. And as we go, would you be with Brother Kevin's uh, request and Sister Regina's request. Oh, Lord God Almighty, thank you for all that you do. In the name of Jesus, amen. My time is up for today. Enjoyed being with you. Look forward to being with you on tomorrow. Until then, know this. Our God loves you, and so do we.